Again, it's Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard. And you can see in front of you a 16 by 20 inch canvas and a little piece of chalk I'm going to draw some stuff on. And this is cool because yesterday my students spilled this paint on top of that paint and then I took it off the Lolafi silicone mat that I was gifted and that is an amazing skin. That could make a tremendously beautiful tree. And I'm going to just stash that. Actually, I'm going to put it right back where it came from because I don't think it's going to hurt it a bit to leave it right there right now. I can always peel it up again. It'll just get drier. So these are acetate cards, just little pieces of edge catcher I've cut up, and I'm going. I'm thinking about using them for swipe tool. What I want to do uh, is make some canyons. And so even though you can't see that, I should have used the blue chalk. Where is the blue chalk? Okay, I have no idea where the blue chalk is. It's around here somewhere in a box. Oh, hey, wait. Okay, pardon me for making you wait. This stuff is sidewalk chalk. It's like a buck from the dollar store. And I think I'm going to use green. But if I'm going to do some canyons, I kind of feel like if I do what I'm planning on doing, it'll work out because I'm going to put my colors in to tip and move into these areas. And then if they're not all the way extended up, I can do the bottom half. So I'm going to have to start with my sky, no matter what, which means I'm going to flip this around. And I'm going to be kind of quick, I hope. And I love purple, so I have no problem with the purple being a part of this process at all. I'm thinking that a little bit of neon won't hurt anything. It washes out really fast, like in just fades away. This purple is great because it sells like crazy. I'm going to probably go even lower than I intend on leaving my mountains at the bottom. Just to start with, I'm going to grab some more pink. Yes, I love that pink. I might even throw a little bit of red in there. The magenta, hmm, maybe this other pink. Yeah, that's the one right there. So I'm going to use my OXO omelette turning spatula across the top and use the residuals immediately on the end. So I get something that's a semblance of the color that's down below it. I'm going to knock that right off and go back and forth a couple of times. Whoops, I lost a drop of paint. <laughs> Sacrilege. <laughs> I know, I'm funny. All right, so, so far so good. I don't mind if the top of my sky is a little dark. I could even put some Prussian blue up there and be pretty happy about it. Now keep your spatulas clean. If you own one of these things, you will not be happy because it will pull tracks and traces of any little filaments of paint that you have left on there, dried on there. I'm gonna keep doing the same thing again, all the way down on both sides. Because once I get my land mass or my cliffs or my canyons in place, it's not going to matter anymore. They'll just flow right over whatever's there. And that's a nice sky. It's very bright at the top, and I really kind of think that what I said about the Prussian blue should probably come to pass. I'm just going to go right down here and continue on with my filling of the space. And if I have marks, I can put clouds in, but I prefer not to have marks, <laughs> as you might be able to tell. Looks like there'd be a cloud up there. So why don't I do, right, I'm just going to go right across through this area that I expect to have my canyons on either side. And I'm going to throw a little bit of red or pink in there now, because I want it in there. I just like that streaky effect. Should have gone all the way to the edge. All right, so I want some of that Prussian blue right up here. Cross your fingers. I'm gonna just knock that right in and bring it right over. So it's a twilight sky, and I might need to put a little bit of that on my end since my end is very purple now less Prussian blue and more purple. And I don't want streaks in there, so I'm going to have to slow my roll, level out my spatula. Actually, streaks isn't the problem. It's, it's the little filaments that catch. The insignificant can't even see them. Should have cleaned them off earlier, filaments. So I've left my stuff in my way. And that's okay. I'm not unhappy with that. I've got some more on my spatula and I'm going to use it right there. 
and I could probably even do it again, but I do have to do it all the way across or it doesn't always work out. The Prussian blue will usually take over, so start slow, be discriminant, and work your way up. If you have to add more, you can add more. The blues don't often sell, so that's why you're not seeing too many cells. If I were to stick, where is it? This shade of purple, that light with the white in, or that one, which is also light, uh, one could be in Anita's very easily. And um, I get those at Hobby Lobby. I wish I could put them on my Amazon link for you guys, but they're so inexpensive that I don't think they want to let them be marketed anywhere outside of the store that they're already in. I don't know how that works. So I'm just touching my side. I'm going to take the paint off. Put it sitting on my tile. Put it right up there. Clean off my spatula very quickly and rest it for the next time I want to use it. Now, I think if I do this right, I'll be fortunate. And I'm going to need an edge catcher, which means I might have left a little too much paint in my way. So I'm going to take a moment. I really wanted some of that in there. I can put that in there tomorrow if I want it. All right, I'm going to get these pinks out of the way because they're not going to be part of my cliffs. But I am going to do... I kind of think that what I'm wanting to do is using the black gloss enamel instead of the satin, which is what it, the S would have stand, stood for if that were the case. Anyway, so instead of pouring my paint into a... Uh, shovel or another container, I'm just going to put it right here and hope that I can get away with this. But I think I'm going to have to do it. If I want a canyon on both sides, I'm going to have to do it on both sides. And I really kind of want to do the shovel thing too. I probably shouldn't have made a pot. If I left the colors separately, I might have a much better chance of being able to pull something. So why don't I just try it the first time? Because if I have to do this tomorrow, I will. Let me move these out of the way. Do I have enough gold in there? I didn't put any brown in there, and I wanted to put a bunch of brown in. I think I'm going to put some black in, too. And since highlights are good, we'll put some more gold up at the top. I want to have enough paint so that it will flow where I need it to flow. And if I start to see that this might work well, I may go ahead and do the other side. So I'm going to lower that edge catcher down to where I'm not getting rid of any paint, and I'm going to let it pool and I'm going to run it up a little ways. I'm going to rock it just a second. That green is kind of funky in there. Maybe I'll get used to it. I, I was thinking about silver. They're very funky colors. I'm not happy with that green. <laughs> but I am going to continue. And I'm just going to let that roll right down there and leave a puddle in a second. I'm going to keep rocking it because my intention is to let it go all the way to the bottom. So what do I want to put over that green that's bugging me? And I think the truth is, if I put some gold in there, it won't be so bad. And if I put some more green in there that I like better than that green, it will camouflage it a little bit, we hope. So I'm going to do the other side, as I said. And I'm going to try to do it a little differently. If it comes out differently, I'll just use it as a learning experience for the next time. I really like this, too. I don't think that's a bad color to have in rocks. It's a red rocks. And since I'm here, and I want colors I like more than the colors I started with, I'm just going to give them to myself. Let's try and remember the brown. So this is different on this side. I'm not going over the colors. And that might make a huge difference, but we don't know until I try. That's the purple I already used. I know this looks weird. It looks weird to me too, believe me. But if I want to do what I'm thinking about doing, which I change my mind all the time, so get ready for that. <laughs> this is an Anita's Metallic that I use freely as a gray because it's just not as dark. So I'm going to put these away a little bit, see if there's a color. I'm not using that green again, though. Maybe I should use a little bit of that green so the eye jumps from side to side. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of that green. I got my fingers crossed. All right, so first of all, I'm going to take the residual paint off my edge catcher with this spatula. 
and I can remove all of that paint. So that's what I'm going to do. Not only does it clean my edge catcher, mostly. All right, I've got to do the same thing I did on the other side, which is drop the edge catcher down to a place where it won't take the paint off the side. I'm going to rock it and send it back down again. And I'm going to wish I had another edge catcher on my turntable and seeming, even without realizing why, I have one. So there we go. And I can touch up my edges. I've got some paint dripping over. I'm not completely covered, but I wasn't expecting to be covered there yet anyway. So this is really I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> this is about as far as I need it to go for what I've got, what I had in mind. But I think what I'm going to do is let that run over, all the way over, and then back. I'm use this other edge catcher in case I lose something. And I'm ready, almost ready to try the, uh, the enamel. Because I can sort of thing. But I think I have to, what I really think I have to do is I have to put my bottom piece in first. And that's not necessarily true, but that's what I'm thinking. So let's use what I've got residual wise. And I want to wipe that off because it's so brown now. I didn't lose too much on the other side. It's time for me to do what I said I was going to do if I'm going to do it at all. All right, so here goes nothing. Oh boy. <laughs> I got to try it. I just got to know. So this is black gloss enamel that I tried in a multiple of swipes the other day. And I am going to just, oh boy, oh boy. I'm going to let that go right over the bottom. This could be a completely different kind of pattern on this piece. And I'm going to come back quickly, hopefully, because I should have a rounded end one of these. And I have a pair of scissors, so guess what I'm going to do? Even though I kind of like that. <laughs> I don't want a hard line there, so I'm going to round that out a little bit. I didn't think I might make the paint go all the way to the bottom, and that's kind of a cool thought. It's different, that's for sure. All right, so I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. Only I want to get that... Where did it go? can't tell me it fell right under that one droplet. I guess it, maybe it did. So I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this. But right now... I'm just going to keep playing with it. And I'm going to cover those spots that I see that became naked. There's no reason that I have to have just the one area. What do I want to put in there? Do I want to try something? I do. Just the one copper area. And just use that card's residuals on the bottom. It's maybe not my favorite so far, but nothing's ever kept me from continuing my experiments anyway. I think I really want more purple in there. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Just learning, hoping I still get my cells to come back again. And wanting to play. And really, since I'm not seeing anything I like and I don't want a torch yet, I'm going to just put some chain right in there. And leave a pattern. Because I can, that's the name of my first book. You can find it on the Amazon link below, show more underneath the video. And I'm not minding those patterns. I am going to let that paint go right over the end. There are some nice things in here I don't mind too much. I'm 
I'm not sure I like it as much as I like the other side. Could be one of those paintings you never see. Well, you know what? In for penny, in for pound. I really want to try some gold because I know the gold pops some major cells. And I've got one clean side of this. I might want to try some purple too. I just stuck my fingers in paint. There, I don't mind that purple streak. And I could use some regular black at the bottom and see how that works. Actually, I'm getting some pretty neat patterns and I'm, I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. Just adding a little black breaks things up nicely. I like that. Add some lines and blow into it and you get definition. That's really cool. Or dimension or depth or whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be what it's going to be and we're going to do the other side too. But I think I want... <laughs> I don't know what I want. But I, I think what I had was enough of this stuff going on so that it can come down and I'm going to rinse that off and use it again. You know why? Because I can. <laughs> And where's that black? Oh wow, this is definitely a two-part video and uh, if you guys are interested, the link will be below this video. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use some more black gloss enamel and then bring it down Because I can. So much for my canyon. I'm thinking I'm going to put some black up along the edge of this formation, rock formation, or whatever you have. That's actually kind of cool. That's way cooler than I was expecting right then. And I should torch because you guys are going to be gone soon. And uh, I should tell you guys that this might only be part one. So, I mean, part two. This might only be, this might only be part one. Hello, I'm confused. Um, we know that about me. I'm going to put a little more up there and say this is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida in, at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard in case I lose you. I'm probably going to put a sun in there, so maybe there will be part two after all. I decided to leave a few more things popping around on this side. It was a little more gentle. I had brighter colors, but um, you ought to look at that right now because I have no idea what it's going to look like when I finish part two. I torched to release the bubbles caught in the paint from shaking the paint because there's pouring mediums in there. My paint pouring recipe is underneath the video. I do not want to fry that edge catcher. They melt very easily. Torches and edge catchers do not go together. They have some tremendous cells. Plenty of paint floating around if I have some canvas showing. I love you guys. There's 85,000 of you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the wonderful comments. Thank you for the contributions. And if you want to be a continuing cont contributor to the studio, you will be automatically entered in the monthly drawing that is on the end screens of every video. The prizes are shown on whatever exhibition video I have posted for that particular month. So in a moment you'll be gone and um, I will not have told you that there's Teespring clothing below the video, but you'll see it and if you click any part of it, you'll be taken to Teespring and see my all over print t-shirts and leggings and there are Facebook groups I'll tell you about in part two. This is Priscilla Batsell, I think I said that already. I'm going to touch my bottom up before I come back for part two, but um, that's kind of cool. I could just put a really big red sun in that sky or some kind of sun, maybe right there <laughs> where I stuck my fingernail. All right, we'll see you guys in a minute. Bye for now. Priscilla out. It was a good experiment. And we're still recording. Okay. See you in a minute. Bye for now. Priscilla out.